very hard to be alone. Um, and so, and especially in the showroom, there were just thousands of people going through there, mostly kids. And uh, so I, we started to work on this design for a project called uh, Tower of Silence. And uh, what it was was to provide little rooms, cabins, within which people could go have some degree of removal from this incredible font of consumerism and uh, be able to look out into the city uh, from various conditions. And then, of course, there was a karaoke theater uh, uh, at the back uh, where you could actually go and, uh, and perform. The structure was, uh, was to be made in, uh, had a steel underlayment, and we're gonna, we were gonna looking to use the Sorel sheets uh, to fabricate the skin. Um, they come in very long, they, I think they were three and a half by 12 feet long. Uh, they were all cut with the steel structure coming through and then had dadoed ribs uh, standing up on the outside. It was also an exploration of all the things you could do with the material. And, of course, the Formica company was interested in giving us uh, the material molten uh, in canisters to be able to cast the, uh, the theater at the back end. Well, the Japanese bubble burst and that was that. Uh, but we did get to realize a project for a uh, hardware company uh, in, uh, in Japan. And it was the opposite, opposite, it was the opposite end of a scale of operation. <clears throat> this was uh, an opportunity to do something that was incredibly quick, um, incredibly small, the very small handles, door handles, um, and uh, in a process that was uh, um, really about fabrication completely. So uh, we were asked to come up with a line of hardware for the 21st century. Uh, we did uh, three handles. There was a lever handle, a slightly larger one for public doors, and then a very large uh, push plate pull bar. Um, these are an array of models that we made in the studio. The first two, uh, paper and gesso, uh, uh, basswood, styrene, and then the first castings from the factory. Uh, this is one of my drawings uh, looking at the back and front of this push plate pull bar. And I was also very interested in the tactility of it. And I was interested in recuperating uh, an idea of uh, a word which hadn't been used, certainly was not allowed in school at the time I was a student, which was ornament or decoration. Um, that there were other attributes or aspects to the design of both architecture and objects that were more intangible, that were really about the overt beauty or physical and tactile beauty of the object. Here you see the uh, smaller one, which is now uh, made in, in cast aluminum, actually where uh, I now have a, we have a factory facility in Jersey. We're actually fabricating them here and, and distributing them. Uh, the second one, which will go into production sometime soon, and the push plate pull bar, which is about 36 inches uh, long, which are made by hand of milled and uh, machined metal, um, was a very gratifying experience because it was really a way of reaching uh, an audience and being able to bring design to people in a very different uh, capacity. And it didn't require a building, and it was obviously it was sold all over Asia, and um, uh, it was a very, very nice, pleasant experience. Um, we also got a commission uh, slightly after that to look at a building which we thought we went to see it was a modernization, uh, both renovation, restoration, and modernization. It turned out it was a building done by Henry Ives Cobb, uh, who was a very well-known architect at the turn of the century. Uh, we found under a very bad renovation in 1950 um, all of, a lot of Cobb's original uh, cast terracotta work uh, and cast stone. Um, we had these four photographs. It was like the movie Blow Up, for any of you who have seen it. We had these four photographs that we kept enlarging bigger and bigger so we could remake the original drawings and fix uh, the material. <clears throat> you can see here in the restored state, we even found the two original heads uh, which had been removed <clears throat> in, a, um, in the original contractor's backyard in Westchester in New York um, because they were made in those days what was considered thin construction. This was... Uh, masonry on a steel frame was 12 and a half inches thick. <clears throat> so it uh, was worth looking for. Um, the project was, uh, was, when we completed it, was very celebrated because it was, uh, we really tried to make a hybrid of new and old techniques of decoration and form and material. Uh, Herbert Mouchamp, who wrote the review in the New York Times, 
uh, really pay great credit to the ability, uh, the stretch that we made to really find ways of having contemporary design find a way to speak in the same room because I had always avoided it in earlier projects because there were room dividers. So we had old buildings, new interiors. But here it all had to be in the same space. It all had to coexist. So where we couldn't find uh, floors, we redid the floor. Uh, not to interrupt the terracotta with lighting, we put it all in the floor. We redid the ceilings <clears throat> with, uh, in the same system. Uh, in the panels, they were all made from our very elaborate shop drawings. Uh, they were then uh, made into clay molds. They made rubber uh, uh, clay models, rubber molds, and then castings. You're looking at one of the uh, uh, one of the artisans who's going from the uh, from the uh, uh, flat cast into the carving to get the first uh, piece, so he could make the rubber impression to make the replicate pieces. We put all the uh, uh, plumbing and mechanical equipment in the. Uh, sprinklers that were hidden all in the construction. We made new contemporary cast lighting sconces and pieces to be embedded into the ceiling that would kind of speak to the speak in the same ornamental language. And when it was finished, uh, it all kind of fused together, including a new desk in the lobby, which was made of sheet bronze and silver and uh, and steel and wood. Um, very ornamental and elaborate object which was really uh, very much in fitting and in, in keeping with the interior. The only place we parted company was the, uh, some of the colors which we used which had been really somber and the owner was uh, not interested. We also uh, redid some of the typical floors upstairs and again in a much more contemporary idiom uh, but also with a lot of the same ornamental uh, ideas in the uh, terrazzo flooring in the corner guards uh, made in uh, milled aluminum and you can see some of the intricacy of the desk. Um, <clears throat> we did a project, uh, another few projects, um, this one in the country for uh, Philip Roth, the writer, American writer. Uh, this was uh, his writing shed up in Kent, Connecticut. He had a 17th century farmhouse. Uh, he had an extremely bad back, I suspect from typing, and uh, wanted a swimming pool, uh, an indoor swimming pool built so he could swim laps and then go back and write. Um, did not want a masonry building. He wanted something that was, uh, uh, you know, the word warm and uh, comfortable came up and wood. So this was actually one of our first uh, entrees into a uh, completely wooden building. Uh, this was all done in, in uh, cypress and, uh, and mahogany, originally designed with a copper roof. Um, large doors and which were operable that could look that looked out onto this huge lawn uh, that he had. Um, the interior was also done in uh, in sheets of marine plywood uh, with uh, walnut inlays. You can see the mechanical system, humidification system, which were all these wooden perforated grills. There was a walking lane. His was married to Claire Bloom at the time, and uh, she was supposed to walk with him while he. Uh, while well, he went back and forth, and of course they got divorced, and that was the end of the project. Um, uh, but you really can see the remnants of the intricacy of also what we were starting to explore in the, in the fabrication of openings of, of doors and windows, the, uh, trying to understand what happens at the moment that the wall is opened, that light is admitted, uh, there's this intimacy between the inside and the outside, and the response to the construction system uh, we felt um, was really about uh, the, the frame which could yield in this much more intricate way and uh, uh, the wooden frame inside the wall and then the frame of the door and window which could produce the second level of, of uh, detail uh, in the surface of the door. Uh, we did get a, another project, it was my swimming pool period I assume, uh, it was a project in Amagansett, Long Island in addition to this builder's house. Uh, a scheme for a very large, uh, my wife likes to call it a um, body of water. It was so much bigger than a pool. Um, but it was a, a project, again, that was set in the landscape. Uh, first scheme was uh, much more ambitious with stone and um, uh, a lot of terracing. Uh, when the budget came in, we had to modify that. It then became a completely wooden project with a stone terrace set in the ground. You can see a drawing of the water courses traveling through the various uh, uh, plunge pools, sitting pools, main swimming pool, lap lane pool. There was a small changing building uh, here 
And then finally, as it was re- 